Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Down Under Mastermind Call. It's the 19th of November, 2015. And tonight we have Dee Smith with us, and she's going to tell us a bit about um, her journey and then get to um, teaching us how to use Pinterest. Welcome, Dee. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. Um, so, I guess t for today's um, presentation, what I wanted to do is actually um, really try to inspire you to jump on board Pinterest if you're not already on Pinterest. Um, and just to see how you can actually use it for your business and also for your personal day-to-day -day use. Um, it's just a very different platform to um, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. It's a, um, it's a platform that you know, they consider themselves not to be a social, social media network. Um, it's a place where people go on to be motivated, to be inspired, to discover things for their future. And it just doesn't have that negative, unpleasant comments that you can find on, on other platforms. So um, before we're delving into all things Pinterest, um, I thought I'd like to just give you a little bit of a brief background because um, I haven't been um, probably on a down to webinar for quite some time. So I guess sort of um, how I came to be with SFM. Um, before I continue, my sound okay? Is yeah. it, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so I have been nursing for 20 years. For probably, uh, say, 10 years of that or a little bit more, I've been predominantly doing more education and consulting and training. And um, only a few years ago, I was able to start my own business using my profession, um, running a first aid training business. Now, even prior to that, probably over the last um, nine years or so, I have pondered and pursued multiple business ideas. Um, you know, there, there's, there's so many of them, but a brief overview of that was um, I was going to be the best barista and have a little coffee cart, give up my nursing to do that. Um, I was also going to be a power seller on eBay, and I actually convinced my husband to take a $3,000 eBay magic course so that um, we could learn how to do it properly and become power sellers. Um, I decided that we, after doing all my sort of research into what, what niche, we were going to do Australian made Ugg boots. Um, probably a really dumb idea, very expensive to buy here wholesale and you just can't make the profit that and compete with um, the not so good overseas made Ugg boots. So that was one, one attempt of running my own business and um, trying to do more of a lifestyle business. I always wanted to do some sort of business that freed up um, some time with the family. And um, what else? I've always wanted to be an interior designer. Um, at one stage I was going to be a drafts person um, after doing a massive extension that I sketched out myself, but right into doing the kitchens and the bathrooms and all those sorts of things. So always love design and colours. Um, so I did an interior decorating course. I um, enrolled in an interior design course, but I had, you know, it was baby number three at this stage and I had to be a big girl and go back to work, so I couldn't study again. Um, and probably the biggest, I can't really say regret, but maybe mistake was when I decided that I would invest in another online business idea and this was um, a, a jewellery and accessory business that you could set up where you actually paid a lot of money to have the mentoring, um, have the website designed. At that stage, you know, I was told I think it was thousands of dollars to create a website, which I now know is a little rubbish. Um, and so, yeah, so I was right into the, the training, um, getting my colour schemes, getting my website designed, ordering in all my wholesale stock, um, and I thought this was it. And, um, you know, 12 months later I had to sell up and I couldn't even sell my website, I couldn't sell the stock. I um, just, just didn't make a success of it. So I guess, um, you know, I felt like I let my family down a bucket full and my husband obviously. Um, kept supporting me with all these ridiculous ideas that I kept coming up with. And, um, 
yeah, and I, I spent a lot of money for that business. Um, sort of got sucked into it, but um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, and even back then, um, I think it was 2010. Um, the girl that was trading me with certain stuff we started talking about Pinterest, and so you know, I wish back in 2010 I decided to jump on board with Pinterest. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so anyway. Even though I felt like I'd let everyone down um, and I did give up on my ideas to be an entrepreneur, um, I just kept having more and more ideas, nagging little voice in my head, um, and I, you know, eventually kept looking for other things. And then I started researching internet marketing and signed up to um, quite a few lists of all those, you know, make millions online type. Back and got lots of information sent out to me and started learning about affiliate marketing. Um, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And then one day I remember um, just Googling uh, work from home, make money online, I think it was, working from home, which is, you know, sounds fabulous. <laughs> and that's when I came across uh, Marie Santos and I signed up and met the boys on video and I think uh, I think I maybe got to video two, possibly three, um, before I've just gone, this is what I've been looking for, and I signed up. So I didn't even finish the video series, so I'm not sure if any of you guys can relate to that. Um, so that was May last year. Now, um, since then, um, I have created three websites. Um, just um, I enjoy, as I keep saying, enjoy creating websites, enjoy creating images and colours and all that sort of design aspect. Um, and, you know, the learning curve is straight up. The, um, the digital skills that I have learnt in that time frame, I do think that I probably take for granted. I sometimes catch myself when I'm talking about things, realising how much I have learnt. Um, and so, you know, I knew that if I was going to be successful online, I needed to be very well educated. So, um, I like, I've done a blogging, I've done a couple of blogging courses, I really, I quite enjoy blogging. Um, I also have a fiber gig where I do ebooks, um, designs, I use graphics creator to do them. Um, so, you know, it's slow, but um, I'm still getting gigs. Um, it's time consuming, um, but I quite enjoy um, doing that. And um, the one thing that keeps pulling me um, towards branching out into that as my, um, I guess, real or my own um, business is Pinterest. So I get to um, feed my creative mind, I guess, um, and it's a business where you can actually help other business owners um, utilise that platform to drive a hell of a lot of traffic to their website, and it's free traffic and um, also to gain brand awareness um, and it's just a, a really exciting platform, absolutely love it. Um, I feel really comfortable on Pinterest, I, I don't really like Facebook to be honest, um, yes I will use it for my business but I'm not a massive Facebook fan. Um, I haven't really spent the time to get my head around Twitter um, or Instagram, um, I probably will with Instagram. But I do believe that if you're going to be successful in my nursing, I've always specialised. Um, and I think that for me, niching into Pinterest and learning everything I can about Pinterest will be able to set me up down the track as becoming, you know, a real <coughs> Pinterest. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> um, so um, without waffling on too much more, um, I have a little presentation to um, share with you um, on all things Pinterest and we are just going to really cover the basics today because from the feedback um, that I was getting that a lot of you don't probably utilise Pinterest the way it should be used or maybe there's lots of things you don't know about it. If there are people listening that do use Pinterest, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to show you um, probably quite a few things that you weren't aware that you could do with Pinterest. Um, so. To start off with, as I said, I'll just do a presentation and we'll jump onto Pinterest Live and I'll show you around. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds all right. Okay. All right. Now Are let me see how I go. on your computer? Yeah, I'm going to do the share screen, see how I go. Yeah. 
Can you see my first slide? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so what do I want to cover? And um, I know that we try to stick to an hour, so I've been trying to be conscious of that. So we'll see how I go. So um, what is Pinterest? I'm certainly going to be um, discussing what Pinterest is. And then I want to discuss three reasons why you're missing out big time if you're not actually on Pinterest. I'm going to give you some statistics and then we'll discuss some the pins and boards and then we'll go on to Pinterest Live and, and then we'll go from there. So Ben Silverman is actually the CEO of Pinterest and this might surprise you but they, um, his quote is, we're not a social network. My dream would be that Pinterest becomes this indispensable tool where people plan for their future. So what exactly is Pinterest? And Pinterest themselves they even say this, but I love it, but they say it's where all the good stuff is found online. So when you are um, Googling and you hit a variety of websites and there's certain things that you like and you end up bookmarking them across the top of your you know, URL and you've got all these tabs across, there's only so many that you can actually um, bookmark. And you know how many times you actually ever go back and read that article. Um, so the point of Pinterest really is a um, bookmarking tool where you're actually able to pin an image from a website onto a board on Pinterest and you can organise it with um, category, by categories, by topics, by themes. Pinterest is actually what they call a visual search engine as opposed to being a social media network. So a visual search engine, we'll go through that in a lot more detail when we jump onto Pinterest. Now Pinterest is a place, as I've mentioned, where people actually go on there to discover things. It's to find inspiration, motivation, and it's where people plan for their future. So you know, a really popular thing that people do on Pinterest is they're planning a wedding. Um, they can set up boards for dresses that they like. Um, they could even set up the bridesmaid dresses, and I don't want to start going off on a girly um, Pinterest thing because it's certainly not a place just for girls. Um, but people also, you know, if they're designing their house, um, they're renovating a room in their house, they may set up some boards um, looking at the furniture that they want. Um, maybe it's the dining table, maybe it's the kitchen, maybe it's the bathroom. There's loads of DIY um, stuff on Pinterest and I'll show you all the categories we can go on there. But it is something that people do where they actually pin all these things from the web, all the good stuff, they pop them onto their boards. And it may be something that they want to do later. It may be a destination that they want to travel to. And, um, and that's the real difference with Pinterest, as I think it's the most positive, motivational, inspiring place online to be. And it's obviously visually beautiful as well. So um, some statistics. Now, the fastest group, the fastest growing group on Pinterest, believe it or not, are males. Since last year, there are now 75% more males on Pinterest. And um, another way to look at that is approximately two-thirds of the male pinners have just joined in the past 12 months. So can you imagine what's going to happen in 2016, 2017? Pinterest really is in its infancy. Pinterest started in 2010, um, so it's only really five years old, and they are you know, adding new features real, uh, you know, really often at the moment. There's lots of different things that have been coming out. Another thing you may not realise is that there are 1 million boards and 15 billion pins. The pins are images. Okay? Now, 80% of pins are repins. So repins, that is when someone actually goes in, um, this maybe scrolling through Pinterest, they find a pin about um, an article of maybe it's blogging tips, um, and they actually then pin it to one of their boards, so they have collected that. That's called a repin. But 80% of all the pins on Pinterest are called repins. So what does that mean for you? Well, that means there is 20% of people making the content, delivering the content. So you want to be that 20% if you're doing this for your business. So two-thirds of the pins actually come from Pinterest websites. So there is pins on there that don't actually link back to a website. There may be just inspirational quotes or just really beautiful images. Um, Every single day, 14 million articles are actually pinned onto Pinterest. And the other thing which is good for you as, um, for your business is that 83% of active pinners, now active pinners are, are um, 
categorized as people that use Pinterest monthly. And they would actually rather be following a brand over a celebrity, celebrity or a stylist. So what that means is that on Pinterest, brands do really well. Okay. And the other thing is, and this may be a surprise, um, even if you are not on Pinterest, you haven't opened up a Pinterest account, but let's say you have a blog or a website um, and you have images and you've obviously got some traffic, so let's hope you've got traffic reading your articles. Um, people can actually pin images from any website. So what you can actually do is that URL, hopefully you can see that, um, you type that in, so that's pinterest.com forward slash source, and then you type in your um, URL, and it will actually show you who has been pinning um, or what pins or what images on your site have been pinned to Pinterest. So that's with you know, even, so if you're not on Pinterest, um, your pins and images on your blog may actually be. Okay, so um, why do you, should you use Pinterest for your business? You know, without, without a shadow of a doubt, the number one reason why you really need to be considering Pinterest for your business is traffic. Now, um, Pinterest actually is um, responsible for driving um, traffic to your website. They come in as the second largest driver of traffic. Um, the first is obviously Facebook, but when you look at Facebook has... Is anyone typing? What is that? Um, when you um, are looking at Facebook, then you have one billion users. When you're looking at Pinterest, they have only just, um, as of September, released their latest statistics, which says that they now have come up, of, you know, jumped up to having 100 million monthly users. So yes, it's not 1 billion like Facebook, and I hopefully we'll never get to 1 billion, but when it, with, you've got 100 million monthly users, and they are second, the second largest driver of traffic to website. That is a pretty incredible statistic. It also refers more traffic to websites than Twitter, YouTube, Google+, StumbleUpon, Reddit, and LinkedIn combined, which is another really interesting and mind-blowing statistic. The other thing that Pinterest does is that it encourages traffic back to your website. So this here is um, a pin from, um, I've done a while ago from my blog, Not a, it should be a lot taller, that pin. Um, but if you can see these blue arrows, these are all the areas where Pinterest actually um, really encourages that you head back to the website. So yes, there's collections of all these images and there's descriptions underneath, but you've got pin it, you pin it to your website, you can actually visit the website, it tells you where this pins come from, um, who the source is, it also should, um, gives you more information on what else that person has pinned. It says, um, well, it's a really good idea to put your logo on your, um, you know, on your images as well. And it's a description underneath, plus I've put an actual, I can't really see it there, but I've actually put my um, direct URL as well. So there's a hell of a lot of encouragement to get people off Pinterest onto your website so they can find out more information. Okay, so the second um, reason why um, you really need to get your business onto Pinterest, your online business, is for SEO. Now, your search engine optimization. So, um, what a lot of people don't realise is that the um, Pinterest boards are actually um, ranked by Google. So the Google al algorithm absolutely loves um, Pinterest. So what that means is that um, Pinterest can actually help you rank for keywords in search engines. What's really important is that when you are creating your Pinterest account and your images that you actually optimise all of your boards, your pins, your images um, with, key with keywords that people would be searching for um, that would actually be able to come up with something that um, you're offering. Um, and you can rank on page one of Google pretty quickly because Pinterest is already highly ranked on Google. So Pinterest boards do come up on page one of Google if the person is clever enough to have actually optimise everything with their key chosen keywords. Okay, and the third um, major reason why you should be on Pinterest, and why I love it so much more than the other platforms, is longevity. So they say that Pinterest content is what they call evergreen content. It lives forever. Once it's on there, um, it lives forever. And you may argue that um, 
everything on Facebook is there forever, but you cannot search for old posts like you can when you're searching for information on Pinterest. So the average half length of a pin is three and a half months. So you're thinking, well, what's an average half length? So I'm just going to explain that to you in a little bit more detail. So according to Wise Metrics, the, um, the half life of a tweet, so that is the time in which you earn 50% of all clicks and views, is approximately 24 minutes. On Facebook, your posts will only have a half life of about 90 minutes at best. And therefore, another way of looking at this is that a single pin, so a single image, will last approximately 1,680 times longer than a Facebook post. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Um, there's BuzzFeed, which is a news and entertainment massive website. Um, they are huge on Pinterest, so it, it goes to show that um, Pinterest is no longer um, what people used to think, which was recipes and, and wedding dresses and all the girly stuff. Um, BuzzFeed does, there's many, many success stories, but BuzzFeed does exceptionally well driving traffic from Pinterest. And what they've said that is the majority of their posts that they publish on Pinterest drives traffic two months later after posting. So it's just sort of emphasising how, um, you know, the longevity of your pins on Pinterest. So. Um, I know this is uh, quite wordy, this slide, but I have written this in one of my blogs, so I thought I'd just share it with you. Um, so creating valuable, helpful, and motivating content for your Pinterest boards is certainly well worth the effort because Pinterest users are collecting content to use for now and also in the future. They refer back to their boards for years to come. When they repin content, their followers are exposed to the pin who then check out your website. They may save that pin to their boards and then the followers may repin, and so the cycle begins, this repinning cycle. What this means is that you've got your own little army of people repinning and repinning your image that links back to your website. So it's actually um, what this causes, this repinning, allows your pins to proliferate, proliferate, let's try that again, through Pinterest, which not only adds to the longevity of your content, but ultimately generating more and more traffic to your website and blog for free. So hopefully that has got your attention. Now, um, this actually looks a little bit smaller than when I popped it on there. So this here is a um, really just a little layout of a profile page on Pinterest that I um, tried to put as much information on as possible that you can go back to. Um, so you have a username when you join Pinterest and you have up to 15 characters. It's a really good idea to um, have a keyword in your username if possible. So let's say, um, you know, with, this is my new business that I'm still building, building the website. So even though you might go check out my website, there's lots of stuff unpublished so it's not off the ground yet. Um, but when I've been trying to do my Pinterest um, Username, I've only got 15 characters to play with, so you have to get really smart with it. And social media would be um, a bit of a, um, a keyword. So people still, um, Pinterest is still classified as a social media platform. It may end up moving away from that to, you know, in years to come, but it is grouped in with all the other social media platforms, so people still consider it that. Um, so you know, I might be better off having R for Rosie, R social media, because people aren't going to really search um, for Rosie social media on Pinterest. Um, but there are other, absolutely other ways of where you pop your keywords in to be able to be found um, on Pinterest. So up here, when I take you to, um, when I take you to the actual live Pinterest on my um, profile page, your profile picture um, can be you know, a mugshot of you, a very nice photo, or just a logo, depending on whether your branding is, you know, whether you have a brand a logo that you want to be, um, you know, the, the face for your business or whether or not it's um, you or your logo, either way. It's 165 pixels by 165 pixels, so you want to make sure whatever, um, your, oops, sorry, whatever your image is um, will be um, fit into the centre of that circle. So I love here you have the name of your business, um, so it can either be your name or your business name. And you're actually given up to 100 characters, but um, so you can keep going with your keywords as well. But only about 27 will be visible, so um, when people come onto your profile page, it does change depending on whether or not you've used capital letters or characters. Sometimes you can actually squeeze um, more or less that's actually visible for people to see. 
Then you've got a little bit underneath where you're going to do your about, about me, so about you or your business. This is where you want to go to town on really trying to sell, um, you know, offering what your, what, what, what's the benefits, I guess, of following you and your business. Um, you know, why would they want to follow you over some other blogger, for example? Um, and you want to also put in a, a CTA, so a call to action as well. And you do have 160 characters to fill up your About Me page. A lot of people don't use all the characters, but um, yeah, you just want to be able to um, maximise um, being found on Pinterest by certainly making sure you are covering the main keywords that um, people will be searching for if they want to find you. You also will have your website and a tick that it's, and it's, where it says it. Actually, the tick's gone now, but the tick was where, there um, months ago, but you actually have to verify your website so that they know that you're actually a legitimate business. Now, moving down here on your Pinterest profile, you will see um, boards, pins, likes, followers, and following, and I'll go through what each of those mean when we go to Pinterest Live. Um, now, this then what happens is you have end up with um, boards and um, they're arranged in a grid format. The board cover, which is um, really um, where you display your, I guess, your pin of um, what's to give people a, a taste or an idea of what you're actually going to share with them in there. Sorry, I'm not sure what you're doing with the battery. Um, so the actual width of a board cover is 217 times 147. So just what that means is if you do have a board cover, you've actually designed a board cover rather than an image, you want to make sure that your text fits within that, otherwise you won't see it properly. Then underneath you have um, these little thumbnails, they're 51 times 51 pixels, and that will show various pins that you have within that board. Um, and just save so more information regarding how many characters for your board titles. You can, you're can you allowed up to 100 characters, but only 26 are visible. But make sure you use up those 100 characters. Then you have, um, within a board, you have a description. You'll have it up here, and we'll go through that and go to Pinterest. Um, you have boards and pin descriptions, and you have a whopping 500 characters that you can actually um, use. There are limits on Pinterest um, that they've put into place where you can only have up to 200,000 pins. Hopefully I'll never reach that many, so I'm not sure uh, why you would need that many. Um, 500 boards is also the limit, which is huge. Um, when it comes to likes, so likes may be um, various um, topics or images or pins that you like. You can only have up to 100,000 um, only. You can have 100,000 likes, which is huge. And the pinners that you can follow um, is, up, is now um, capped off at 50,000. So um, pins in your feed. So this is just in regards to your images. So when the pins show up in um, you know, the feed itself, the, the home feed, they're 230 pixels. Um, and then they just get adjusted to the height. So obviously we prefer taller pins on Pinterest. When you expand that pin, it is 735 pixels, and then it's adjusted to the height. Okay, and there are other types of boards. So you have um, the boards that you have organised yourself based on the categories, topics, or themes that are related to you or your business. But then you have these other um, two different types of boards. So um, secret boards and group boards. So secret boards are awesome. So what happens with the secret board is um, so let's say you decide to get off this webinar and you decide you're going to set up your Pinterest account. Um, what you want to do is actually start creating your boards and make them a secret until you've actually um, put, um, you know, organised your content. You don't want people coming to find you with blank boards. So what you can do is um, create a secret board. Um, you can, and you, it used to be that you could only have three um, secret boards, then you were only allowed six, and now that because everyone loves them so much, they have made it an unlimited amount. Um, you can actually switch, uh, I'll go into it, sorry, when we go to Pinterest, but anyway, um, I don't want to digress too much. So with a secret board, you have an unlimited amount. What can you use them for? You can use them to collect content. So maybe, like I have a, a um, secret book called Blog Post Ideas. So maybe I've come across some blog posts that I love and I'll pin them to my secret board because when I come to do a blog, I will come back to my secret board, read through a few articles that are related and then come up with my own 
be able to you know, copy some of his content, but it gives you some ideas um, and um, helps you with that dreaded bloggers block. It may be something that it's a work in progress, so maybe it is a new board that you're setting up and you're just working on building that board before you actually make it public. You can also use a secret board um, as what we call a collaboration board. So that is when, um, let's say, you are a, a web designer um, and you are working with a client um, and you're trying to decide on themes and maybe you're trying to decide on colour schemes um, or fonts, then you would um, set up a secret board. You invite this person, your client, to the secret board and then both the client and you um, can actually pin um, what, you, what, you, what you want for um, the, the future website. So that's just to give you an idea. Um, you can also keep it um, keep a secret board for your own secrets. So, you know, if you're doing a you, um, Pinterest related to your business, with obviously you've got your own interests as well, but maybe you've got something that's completely unrelated to your business or you don't want um, people that follow you knowing about your other interests, um, then you can set up your own secret board. Other people have used secret boards to uh, organise um, surprise birthday parties as well. Then there is another type of board which is called a group board. Um, now group boards is where people um, can invite other pinners to um, add pins to that board and um, this is a fantastic way to um, you know, be able to get free content. That, that group board actually goes on to your uh, profile page. Um, I'm part of uh, two or maybe three group boards at the moment. Um, what it does is increase your exposure and the number of followers. So, you start pinning onto a group board that may have, let's say, um, you know, 100,000 followers and all of a sudden your content gets exposed to those followers. So um, I've also put a little link down the bottom of that slide, of that image, which is Pin Groupie, which is a place where you can go to find, um, it's where all the group, the group boards are so that you can find one that's relevant for you. You can um, ask to be a, um, join a group board or you can set up your own group board and invite people. But with group boards, you want to use them with caution. Um, you don't jump on every single group board. Um, you will lose followers um, if you are on loads and loads of group boards and maybe you're not pinning relevant content. So, um, yeah, there are obviously pros and cons. Okay. So um, there are pins or images that do extremely well on Pinterest um, and the most popular ones are what we call infographics, so you probably... Um, we've seen loads of them love infographics. Um, the other is checklists, you know, when people write their top 10 um, blogging tips, um, I can't even think of one here, but <laughs> a checklist and um, where you've got dot points um, or you actually have numbers. So it's actually something that people can actually have a look through a tall pin and read through that. The other one that's really, really popular is tutorials, so all of those how-tos. Um, and the other one is videos. You can actually pin um, videos onto YouTube directly from Pinterest and also it accepts Vimeo videos as well. Um, and the awesome thing about that is that if you do come across videos on Pinterest, you just press play and it plays straight in Pinterest. You don't get taken away back to YouTube where you can then get distracted watching a whole lot of videos. Uh, now, there are, other, there are um, six um, switch pins that um, I won't probably have enough time to go into a huge amount of detail of rich pins on this one, but um, just so that you're aware of them. So rich pins you have to apply for. Rich pins um, come in article, product, recipe, place pins, app pins, and movie pins. So I've actually um, got rich pins on uh, my 40 printer um, Pinterest account. And what that means is article rich pins is obviously for people that have um, are writing blogs or articles. And what happens is when that pin comes across onto Pinterest, um, your, your pin looks different. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. Um, product rich pins where it gives a little bit more information regarding, um, it's usually something that's for sale and it might have the price on there as well. Um, recipe rich pins, recipes are huge on Pinterest. Um, and it actually gives you, when you, somebody's actually taken the time to set up a recipe rich pin, it actually um, gives ingredients straight on the pin itself um, and even some instruction as well. So um, when you've got place rich pins that you apply for, which is really just a, like a map trying to you know, give you details of where your business is located, 
app-rich pins if you're able to create an app that's relevant, and then movie-rich pins. I haven't really looked into a lot of movie-rich pins, but that is where um, latest movies, people prop them up for all the movie lovers, and it gives the ratings and um, information on, on the various movies. So. Okay, so um, just moving on here. Now, this is this one here is my most popular pin, and this one is an article which pin. So I'm just going to point out a few differences. So, firstly, um, this pin here, this is a free productivity printables, um, just to help you get organised. So I've actually got a page on my website where I'm actually giving people an entire um, productivity kit for free. So I was just really testing this because. Um, you know, I get jack of going on websites and, you know, there's a download something for free and you go on there and you've got to give your email address and I think, I can't be bothered, I'm going to miss anyone else sending me all their emails. <laughs> so I just wanted to test this out and I thought, I do have an opt-in for my blogging kit printable, so that's different. For this, I thought, let's just see if people, I want people to actually use this. I actually worked with a... Um, uh, go from this Labs and custom designed these um, printables with her with my colour schemes um, and they're called productivity printables and they're really lovely but I don't want them just sitting there going to waste so I want people to actually use them and I want them to um, get some benefit from them. So what I actually did was, um, oh, my eyes are getting bad but I read what I've written here. What I've actually done is I've offered this these free productivity planners for free and I've actually set in here um, for all those procrastinators, you also download for free. Here is something refreshing. These free planners are not in exchange for your email address. They simply you download, print, and use. I really hope that you love them, and I hope you use them to get inspired, to get focused, and to get my reach done. Now, this is my most popular pin. So this was actually pinned onto one of my boards, but it's also on a group board, which is where it got a lot of the repins. Um, then when I was able to get the rich pins verified, so the article rich pins, what well, this is another um, post, what you'll see here is that now the actual um, heading, um, or title, sorry, of my blog is in bold, so it stands out. It says that it's from Fortypreneur and it actually gets my fabric on. So that little symbol there comes straight from my website and it's now on my, it's got a rich pin. So what happens is rich pins actually get repinned more than pins that aren't rich pins. And it has a, also it has, um, it actually takes the data from your website to actually give the description as well. Okay, so there's loads to Pinterest. Um, um, have, oh, someone's phone's ringing. <laughs> Okay, so um, there is a lot more to, to learn with Pinterest and obviously I want to actually jump onto Pinterest before I overwhelm you too much. So other things that can be covered and maybe at another webinar is SEO, how to optimise your pins, your images and your boards, how to create images um, on Canva. My entire PowerPoint presentation was actually created on Canva because it's just my other favourite place to be, hanging out online. Um, there are scheduling tools for scheduling your pins so that you're not... Um, having to um, always be on Pinterest. Um, there is a science behind the perfect pin, what actually works well on Pinterest. Then how to apply for rich pins, something else. There are viable and promoted um, promoted pins. So promoted pins is um, where you actually pay as an advertising um, uh, their ads like you would on Facebook, but you could have promoted pins, not available in Australia at the moment. Um, and then there are loads of Pinterest tools and widgets to help you promote Pinterest. Okay, so I'm going to, um, this is um, my, oh, sorry, hold on a sec. This is my um, image of my profile page, which we're going to jump onto um, and take you from there. So stay with me on stop screens. Okay. Um, before I jump on to Pinterest, um, have I lost anyone or is that giving you a bit of an overview before I jump onto Pinterest and show you around? You nods? Okay, let's just get on with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So um, I can't see you guys now, but this is my um, Pinterest profile page. Can I just somebody let me know if you can see it? Can somebody unmute and just let me know if you can actually um, see my profile page? Yep, it's all good. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Great. Yep. Okay. So what you can see here is um, my. Um, Pinterest page and I'm just going to show you around so that you can learn how to navigate Pinterest easily. Oh, somebody's just drawn a green line on my screen. Who's done that? Can you see that? Robbie, sorry. Can you jump on for a sec? Oh, it's gone. Okay, no worries. All right. So what I want to show you now, this is my laptop. So um, depending on the size of your browser will um, depend on what you can actually see. Um, so what you've got here, as I mentioned, was remember I mentioned about the profile picture. It's really small. Um, it's um, 165 times 165, and I've actually changed this. I just had um, Fraudy Prunner as my um, business name as well, and um, I decided that I would actually add to this when I realised you can have a lot more characters across here. So as you can see, it gets cut off depending on um, whether you've got capitals or characters. I did play around by actually drop it, um, making my P uh, lowercase, getting rid of this, bring it all together into one, and I got a few extra letters on the end. So it's certainly spaces and characters and capitals. Um, so certainly play around with what you can see. But a new thing that they've done is when you actually scroll, I'll just show you this, it actually pops up my profile over here and gives a full, the full description of who I am. Okay, so I thought what we'll do is just start over here. So this Pinterest is um, the Pinterest uh, logo here. We'll take you straight back to your home feed. So um, what you'll see here is um, all. Oh, Someone's TV is playing in the background. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is just scroll down. So um, this is the home feed, which is also called the smart feed. Now, um, what you can see here is pins from pins that I follow and also um, the pins that I follow, what they pin. Um, and you can see, I hope you can spot them now, that's a rich pin. There's a Fabagon, there's where it's come from, there's the bold writing. Certainly stands out to me. Um, there's another rich pin and another rich pin, article pin. I obviously follow lots of blogging things. Um, and, and lots of things on Pinterest. Um, and I'm just going to scroll. Here's one that isn't a rich pin. If you can see that here. Um, so this is your home feed. So this is where you can get some, uh, some a place to come and get some fresh content. What's really good about this is that it doesn't just, every time you come on, you'll see different pins, but it doesn't just pop up all of the um, latest pins. Some of these pins are day, like can be days to weeks old. But they also give you a found in as well, which is just giving you some ideas. So based on your interest and other pins that you've pinned, Pinterest, yet again, is encouraging sharing, um, encouraging really the growth of your business. So it's suggesting um, what other pins you might like. Found in home decor, found in fitness. Um, this is somebody that I follow as well, which is fantastic. Now, this is a new, oh, Sandra, um, <laughs> this is a new feature here where this just um, will flip through and it says find ideas from your friends. So if I click through here, um, what this actually comes up with again, um, it goes best ideas for you and if you want to add more friends. So this is people that have, um, you know, you've been friends and I've linked my Facebook to this um, um, Pinterest profile. So it comes up with um, other boards from friends and then down the bottom you can actually add more friends to find your board, find boards that you love and you can use it by here. You just pop in an email address to find someone, search for somebody on Google, Yahoo and even just email via Outlook. And if you add more friends it just takes you down to the bottom. Okay. So that takes you straight back to your home feed every time. Okay, so here is um, Pinterest search engine, just like Google, except it's only going to show you stuff that's on Pinterest. So there's some of the things I've recently looked up. So, um, you know, I'm going to look up pancakes. So let's say it's Sunday morning and the kids want pancakes. 
Um, so I just want to show you how this works. So um, with the um, same way that Google prompts, um, prompts you, it actually comes up with these are the top keywords that are being typed into Pinterest. So we can go with pancakes from scratch recipe, healthy and for kids. But let's just say if I go with pancakes and press return. This is the best part here. This is called the guided search tool. Now what this means, all of these are more keywords. So you've got pancakes, you have um, from scratch. I'm assuming because you wouldn't really be looking up a shaky pancake. Um, so you come across here and you've got all of your um, keywords to narrow down your search to find exactly what you want. So you've got buttermilk, protein pancakes, blueberry, chocolate pancakes, um, vegan, it just keeps going, gluten free, but savoury, you've got breakfast pancakes, eggless pancakes. Okay. And if I want, let's say, strawberry pancakes, um, I've got strawberry pancakes and um, I'll get some options here. And maybe I want to add easy. I don't have a lot of time on Sunday morning. And I can then start scrolling through from strawberry pancakes. And then I can, these are recipe pins, rich pins as well, as you can see. Um, one that I actually came up with the other day, which I haven't made yet, is Nutella strawberry pancakes. <laughs> so um, what happens now is that you come up with, look at those, wow, so not good for you. Um, so here is a list of pins um, that are recipe pins for making some strawberry pancakes. So maybe I would pin them to a secret board because they're completely unrelated to my business. Um, but you can search for all pins, which is all pins. Then there's your pins. I don't have any strawberry pancake pins, so I won't, there's no point even clicking that because I won't have any. I can search by pinners. So this is, there's actually no pinners that are actually just doing easy um, strawberry Nutella pancakes. And then I can search for boards. Okay, but the best way to do it is all pins. Gives you um, a variety of searches there. Okay, so, um, so you've got the search engine and you've got that guided search. Okay. So let's just head over to here and this drop down um, gives you um, all of the categories that you can choose from on Pinterest. So we've got the home feed. The home feed takes you straight back to where we were where you can click on the Pinterest icon. Now you've got all these categories here. So you've got popular, which is all the trending pins. Um, so if you wanted to do some market research and you came onto popular pins, you can certainly have a look to see what is trending on Pinterest and if there's anything that's actually relevant to, so these are, these are not related to anything that I'm following. I can, um, you know, narrow down my search by clicking under here these related topics, but um, if you scroll through, you might be able to find something that's trending that could be related to your business. Um, okay. Then you've got everything, which is just a mix of all pins. I don't ever search through this anyway. Um, and then you've got gifts. Now gifts, you have to have a product pin for this. And a lot of the gifts are um, that we have access to really from Australia, a lot of Etsy stuff. So you can actually go, um, there it is, Etsy. Have a look at that, some holly for Christmas. Um, and second one to load. Um, it actually tells you how much it is. It tells you it's out of stock. So this is a product rich pin and this is really clever. Um, if you do have a business where you have products, um, what happens is it gives you the price before you actually have to leave um, Pinterest. And if you have a 10% um, discount on your product, whatever it is, Pinterest will actually send an email to all the people that have pinned your pin to let them know that your whatever it is you're selling has been reduced in price. Um, really, really clever marketing. Okay. Um, okay, so then you've got videos. I mentioned about videos. Um, videos aren't long pins, so they're all little short. Um, they'd still do quite well. You can do GIF as well, the little funny little um, short videos. Um, if you do some video tutorials, and also a lot of makeup stuff, you can certainly do that. But once you um, click on it and you press play, which I won't do, it actually plays in um, Pinterest. Not, okay. Then you've got pretty much A to Z. So all of these different categories which you can search through, um, you know, men's fashion, there you go. So um, the other thing um, I haven't really um, did mention about men being the fastest growing group on Pinterest, um, 
men, um, you know, still come onto Pinterest looking for gifts for women because there's a lot of stuff on there as well. But they do have men's fashion and they might, might as well click on this because we've got some guys on. Um, but yeah, you can narrow it down to all their accessories, their sneakers, their shoes, um, and check out some spunky guys. So um, there is your ADZ and all your categories. So all of these categories are covered in um, Pinterest and a lot of times with your business, um, blogging, um, you're educating people. So that would be your main category. Make sure you pick a category when you set up your boards. You don't want to click other um, because the picking category also helps you with your ranking. Okay. So um, now you've got down the bottom here. So you've got about. Now this takes you... Um, across to Pinterest to, to give you a bit more information straight from Pinterest itself. There are some really cool videos um, and, you know, typical Pinterest are all very inspiring and, um, as I said, motivational. So um, obviously I won't have time, but I want you guys to go and have a look at this. So I told you what is Pinterest. It goes through on a video and explains it. Um, you can discover Pinterest further. You can go across these tabs and find out more. Okay. And this is just explaining about the guided search. Okay, so we'll just go back. Um, okay, so just because we've got a lot more to go through. So then you've got um, the Pinterest blog, which is where you go to find um, all the latest um, new features, tips and tricks um, that Pinterest have brought um, out recently. So. Um, I find it a bit difficult to search for articles. You sort of there's no search that I've been able to find, but um, up, like the, it's where you come to find the um, the latest tools. I'm going to show you this. This is the visual search tool, which is just um, pretty much came on board last. I think it was the 9th of November, um, so the last week or so. It's awesome. So I'll show you that in a moment. Um, okay. Then you've got businesses. So this is where you guys will need to come. So. If you have a personal Pinterest account, so maybe you've had it for years, um, you can convert that to a business Pinterest account. The reason why you want the Pinterest is because when you have a Pinterest account, um, you can verify your website, you can link your images back to your website, but more importantly, you actually can access um, Pinterest analytics, which is a fantastic tool um, that to share. It gives you so much information on who is following you, what they're pinning, um, what your competitors are, um, what, how they're doing as well. So this is where you need to come. So it's businesspinterest.com. You join as a business or you, um, if you've already got an account, you just convert. So I'll just show you. When you join as a business, it doesn't take long. Um, I'm obviously not going to join again because I don't have another Gmail address or anything. But you just put your email address, your password, your business name. Don't get hung up on the business name because you can always edit when you get when you actually get your account set up. Then you want to pick what you are. What's your business type? You must select something. Um, for most of you, it will be a um, professional photographer, blogger, or designer. Others are public figures. Um, you could go for a brand as well, possibly. Um, and then there's people that are local businesses. If you're a restaurant or a boutique, and you can actually set up that. Um, and it tells you it takes 15 seconds. Okay. Um, Okay, so um, make sure you go to um, Pinterest business to actually um, make sure that your Pinterest profile page is set up properly. Okay, so if you want to work for Pinterest and then they open an office in Australia, um, hopefully I'll get a job. Um, and then developers, this is where you go, to, where your website um, designer possibly, um, if you have a webmaster, they can actually access this to maybe set up your rich pins for you. Um, maybe it's to set up widgets for you if you're not say savvy with your website. Removals is just all your copyright information for you with that, and privacy terms and editions obviously, which we all have to use. Okay, so um, then we've got. Um, Edit profile, okay. So um, your business name's up here. We're using your keywords. You can certainly change your photo. You can certainly change your username. You write your about me page, which um, I have not used 160 characters. Um, website verification. Now, when you verify your website, um, obviously mine's already verified. You will check 
um, how Pip just explains to you to get a get your meta tags and then you've got to put it in the header of your WordPress and it just goes well over my head. But when you have the Yoast um, plugin, it is really, really easy to do. So um, it's pretty much just um, getting your meta tag and or getting your um, verification code and popping it in there and then it verifies your account. So um, over here, on, this gives you some more information. So it's not the same as what we've just been through. Edit settings actually has opens up a huge um, list of things that you can muck around with. Um, so email address, obviously you fill out all this information. You just scroll through here and um, your profile is there. But then you've got your notifications. So at the moment I am getting notified. Um, I think, you know, as you're following Bros, you might actually want to switch this off because you'll be getting, you know, pings and emails very often. Um, you can just scroll through this. I've only linked it to Facebook. I'm not massive on Twitter. Um, I, I haven't actually connected it to Google Plus for this website. I don't usually use Google Plus, but I have checked it out recently and I love the new layout, so I'll probably jump on board with Google Plus. Um, you can connect it to your Gmail, Yahoo, don't use that either, or Hotmail. And what else there either. And this here is the, the scheduling tool that I'm using, just Tailwind. So that just schedules my pins. Okay. So um, oops, sorry, okay. So find friends if you want to go find your friends um, to maybe encourage them to join Pinterest to follow you. Um, you can certainly do that. Um, through Pinterest and it's linked usually to any of the social platforms that you um, have tied up with your Pinterest account and you can go and find friends and just invite them to your board. You've got your analytics, okay, so um, your analytics tool um, takes, you know, it's somewhere where you can go like I find this so much more interesting and so much more valuable um, than Google Analytics maybe because I understand that a little bit more um, but it gives you your Pinterest, your audience activity from your website, um, tells you about your top pins as well, um, what my audience is. So you know fantastic for your market research. Um, most of my um, demographics are in the United States also a lot of youth so from the United States, um, Canada, United Kingdom, got some from Australia, Netherlands, um, tells you obviously male and female as well. Okay. Um, okay, anyway, I won't go through analytics because there's a, a hell of a lot more to it, but um, let's just go. So um, I'll just finish off this, then I'll head into boards and pins. Um, making a widget. Now, um, if we have time, I can make a widget on my website and show you how to do that, but we may even leave that for next time. So um, if we look at, I don't know if I've got my website open. Let's have a look. Okay, so um, with your widget, um, it's a text widget and you put some code into your website, it sounds all complicated, um, it's actually really easy. Um, I have deliberately put a really long, um, oh, do you know what, it's probably not going to open because I'm actually in Pinterest. Uh, oh, you guys might be able to see it, anyway. Um, so I've got a really long um, Pinterest widget on the side which actually shows all my latest pins but I was going to show you how to change that widget and decrease it in size to show you how easy it is but I think we'll leave that for next time. Um, so making a widget, this is where you come to make a widget, it takes you um, across this one here sorry where it says make a widget it gives you this code for your board, this is what it looks like but in saying that I actually don't make my widgets from here, I actually go into my Pinterest for Business website and you can actually um, create a much nicer widget in there. So, um, okay, so if you get stuck, you can get some help. You can actually go to the Help Centre, which is pretty good, and you can contact a Pinterest expert here online. Um, I'll just show you the visit uh, there, so the Help Centre as well. So over here, um, just gives you some more information on, um, you've got Pinterest Basics, um, you've got a guide to Pinterest and just some, you know, fixing the problem, just your account details, business and websites. So that's a good one to go to if you're a bit stuck. 
And last but not least is obviously log out, which I never do. So, um, okay, so just moving down here to your boards. So, um, tells you the number of boards. I've only got 21 boards. You know, I'll increase that um, eventually, but you also don't want to have so many boards that, um, you know, you scare people away because they sort of think, what, what are you about? Um, in total, I've got 580 pins, so that's how many images I've actually pinned to all of those 21 boards. My likes, look, I've just, the odd time I've just liked um, certain things or images. I've only got six there. Um, I liked this one the other day, 15 more ways to dress up your mum ponytail. Um, and just some other things that I quite like. So then you've got um, how many followers and how many are following you. Now, um, when you look at these boards, what's really important, I've done cover boards. I'm just sort of testing this at the moment. Some experts will say to actually create a um, cover board um, if you're trying to build your brand. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm trying to do at the moment, just a bit of brand recognition. So um, I have themed my cover boards to suit my website. I've also got my big logo there as well. Okay, so if you remember that um, graphic that I had on the PowerPoint presentation it was explaining how what, what the size of this is and your little thumbnails underneath gives you a taste of what's under there. Most Pinterest accounts you'll see will actually have just an image up here. So as I said, I'm just testing this. What you want though, depending on the width of your browser, will depend on how many um, boards you will have across. But what you really want to make sure is that your first four are really what you have um, focused on what your business is about because most users actually use uh, Pinterest on the go when they're on their mobile phone or even on their tablets. And what they will see is mainly the first four boards. So if you're relying on them to keep scrolling, don't, um, because that's what they'll see first. So they'll either go, yeah, I want to see this or I won't. I'm thinking I might change 40 printed blog posts because what you want to do is actually, some people say to actually mix your blog posts into other topics as well. Um, so again, just testing this at the moment. So um, these are your boards and um, as you scroll down, um, what happens is my group boards that I'm part of are down the bottom. Okay, so on my group board, um, this, I actually share content on this group board um, and also this group board. Um, all Think Healthy, I, I, pin, look, I just pinned um, healthy, I don't know where I've done, where is it? Um, Health, health at your age, no, no, it wasn't. It was easy recipe. Oh, there it is, easy dinner recipes. I just set that up because you still want to have a bit of a personality. So you don't want to be all business and no play. So, um, you know, whatever you're interested in. So um, I've got all things blogging, Pinterest, bloggers, printers and planners, Instagram for business, entrepreneurial tips and tools, modern home office. That's relevant for people that are working from home. And, of course, I love all that design. I'm turning 40 next year, so I've got some stuff in there for my birthday party. Um, but also because my brand is 40 Premier, it actually is related. Um, health and fitness for people my age, and, you know, decade on the side of that. Um, detox drinks, da da da. Anyway, when I've pinned some things here, um, whoever owns the script board um, actually invited me to pin on there. So, um, so that's a group board that I'm part of. And as I said, it exposes you to other people. And then just the other day, I was asked if I would contribute to a social media marketing group board as well. Now down here is for its secret boards. Your secret boards are always down here. So if you were just checking out my profile page, you will see these boards, but you will not see here. These are my secret, but not anymore. So um, I actually wanted to show you this one. So um, this is a secret board that I whipped up um, the day before Halloween and um, I grew up in Ireland and we were, you know, had huge Halloween parties so we've pretty much continued that tradition and Aussies are finally catching on to um, Halloween. So what I did was um, I pretty much had a day to get organised because my brother was having a massive Halloween party and I wanted to get dressed up. So I created a secret board um, for Halloween to get some ideas and obviously it's completely not related to my business. And so what we did was um, I collected um, pictures of um, different um, images that I liked and how we could get dressed up and I decided I was going to be a witch, something like that. And um, I decided that my daughter would be a vampire and my son wanted to be a vampire as well. I was trying to do something like this for my husband and I'll pin this in just for you guys to see. There we are. There you're all dressed up, looking pretty scary. Um, and, um, yeah, this was all based on um, setting up that secret board.
So anyway, um, I'm just um, pretty much just going to wrap this up in just a sec, but I just wanted to show you the new tool that Pinterest have brought out. Um, I think... Okay, so this is called the visual search tool that they've, as I said, they've just brought out. So if I pick something that's a good image, um, I'll be able to show you how it works. Um, okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. See this little um, zoomy thing here? So I'll click on this, okay? Now what this does is it allows me to actually search the image for something that I like. So let's say I like this little lamp over here um, and I want to know, I want to see something. Oh, he's lost it. Okay, let me just try it again. Sorry, it's sort of being a bit slow at the moment. Okay, so I like this lamp, and um, if it picks it up properly, it will actually show me um, a whole heap of lamps or light or lighting or something similar that um, is on the um, on Pinterest. And so I can find out where well, I can find out where I can buy that from. And then if I move this around, let's see if I can actually get this chair. Maybe I like this chair out of everything in that image. I want a teal coloured chair. Let's see if it picks up on, on that. Um, okay, so it's pretty close. I mean, it's a bluey sort of chair. Um, but this is just a new feature which obviously um, is something that people are just finding out about. But it just means that you can now search three images so you can find more and more pins that are similar to what you're searching for. Okay. Now, um, if we have time, I'll just check with Robbie, have you got time to go into a board and just show you around the board or is everyone having to rush off? So you can carry on if you want. Okay. All right, so just um, in a board, I just want to show you how to move things around. So um, this is additional things blogging. If I wanted to invite someone to actually contribute to this board, I just click on here, um, and then I would find someone that I wanted to invite. Um, and I can find them on Twitter, Twitter, sorry, Google Plus, or I can just type in their name or email. The only thing is, when you want somebody to um, start contributing to your board, you have to follow them or at least one of their boards, and they have to follow at least one of your boards. This is a, a recent feature as well, is moving your pins around. So what happens here is you just tick um, whatever ones you want to move. So you tick that and what happens is you click move and then you can move it to another board. Maybe you have put it there accidentally. Then you've got um, the copy feature. Now this is similar to repinning, so it means that it stays on this board, but I might pop it onto another board that may be relevant as well. And of course you can delete it. Oh, and there's my uh, pin there on this board as well. That's before it returned to a rich pin. Okay. Okay, so I thought before we um, sort of I bore you too much, <laughs> maybe I'll open it up for some questions. So it's really just a basic overview of Pinterest. There's um, obviously a lot more to it. But um, just to start off with, I thought um, that would be a, a good overview. Okay. Can I just stop sharing, Robbie? What's that? Just click down the bottom. Stop sharing. Okay. Lost anyone? <laughs> no, I think we're pretty much still all here. That was awesome. Oh, thank you. Who is that? Ange. Oh, okay. Thanks very much. I was on a little bit late, but I'm so glad I caught you. No worries. I will be a recording. That's how I listen to everyone's down on the webinars. Definitely recorded. How many did we have on? I can't Three. see. Oh, okay. That's a good number. Gee, okay. it's, it's Rex Taylor speaking. 
Hello. I, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but once one gets onto the Pinterest site, there's obviously yes. a tutorial there and a how-to to sort of follow on from what you've introduced us to, yes? Yeah, when you, when you sign on, um, it's, it's pretty simple actually, but what they'll, they'll ask you to pick five um, interests, don't get so worried, just click, you know, it's five interests, it just is a way that they start giving you some pins. Then what happens is um, you actually create, a, what happens is you fill out your profile and then um, where we did that edit your profile and then you start creating boards. So if I do a quick screen share, um, I might just show you that creating a board part. So let me just see if I can go back to that. Hold on just a sec. Um, okay, so when you get in, um, you'll be able to do what it will ask you to do all this. The biggest thing you'll be doing when you set it up will actually be this one here, which is edit, which is about your settings. Um, and this is the one that you just go through, you just work through this, okay? You fill this, um, you fill this out with all your details. Um, then what happens is you want to start creating a board, okay? So if I was to create a board here, um, and let's just, because I don't have one, we'll just say inspirational quotes or something like that, it's not very original. If I can spell, oh my God. Um, and then you would fill out your description and what kind of board is it? Um, let's just see if there is something for quotes. I think there's something. Let's have a look. Um, food, drink, dining, geek, health, fitness, history, holidays, events, yeah, humor. Quotes. Where is it? PQ. Quotes. There it is. Quotes. Okay. Now, what I want to do initially is this. I want to make this a secret board because I don't want anyone to see it because I've got absolutely nothing on it, okay? So we'll go with um, a secret board for now and then what I want to do is create. I can actually, at this point, decide that I want it to be a group board. So I might ask four or five other people or whatever and I just add them. They would get an invitation by email and also through message or on Pinterest. Um, that um, they if they want to uh, contribute to this board. So then you go with create. And now I have my board and obviously as I said you'll be filling out all your keywords in there. So now what I want to do is actually search for pins that are actually going to, I can actually pin to this board. So um, let's just use this guided search and we'll see what we come up with. So it's coming up with inspirational quotes and these are the top keywords again of what's been typed in, women, teens, girls and motivation. But if I just press um, the, just press enter again, I'm going to get that guided search tool. So what I want inspirational quotes for, um, do I want it for exercise, spiritual motivation, teens? And you just scroll through and see what's relevant for whatever it is that your board is about. Um, so let's just go with daily quotes, okay. Um, and then what I want to do, let's see if we pick a couple of a group. Um, okay. Um, so, okay, so let's say I like this one. Now, before you go on a pinning frenzy, what you want to do is actually make sure, uh, sorry, not for quotes, but if it was a, a, um, a image that was actually linking to a website, you want to go check that website out first and have a read, have a quick read through if you think that it's relevant. What you don't want to do is just go pin, 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 pin and have a whole heap of images on your boards that actually will not link someone to a website because you will lose followers um, and they will you won't be reliable, okay? So for an image, obviously it's a bit different because a lot of times images don't go anywhere anyway. So let's say I like this quote, I'm going to pin it. Now when I pin it, um, what I need to do is search through my boards. Now, it's a new board. Um, actually, while I'm showing you this, um, what you'll find is there's the grip boards. You see we've got um, people and then you've got a lock. Uh, sorry, my pin, it keeps showing up there. So you can see the double people shows you it's a grip board um, and the lock shows you that it's a secret board. Okay. So um, this should be, what did I call it? Inspiration quotes, there it is. Okay, so 
Um, what happens here is I'm going to pin this one. I can actually change this um, this this edit here is rubbish. So I would actually edit this um, and you would put your own little spin on that um, and then you would save it to your board. But just because of time I won't do that. So we'll go and pin that to the board. Okay. And it also gives me motivational quotes. There's somebody that gives me up, that's what's come that's where it's come from. There's more pins from that person. And what's really cool is that if you keep scrolling down, Pinterest actually gives you some related pins. So I might start looking at some other pins here. Um, oops, did I click that one? Okay, I'm not even going to read this just to show you. No, I don't actually want to click on that. So if I pin this one, same thing. Um, pick a board, yada yada. Um, I'll just go down for some more ideas and then I'll show you what to do in your boards. Okay, pin it. Sorry, I clicked the image and I'll pin it. Doing it too quickly. Uh, Okay, and inspirational quotes. Okay, so we just got three pins on there. So um, I've got some little camera blocking my view there. Hang on a sec. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my profile page and what happens because it's the secret board, where's it going to be? Right down the bottom. Okay, so um, if I have a look for my inspirational quotes, so you see what I mean about, so this is why I've done this, but what you want to do is if you're able to get a quote, that actually was able to fit in that cover board that actually said something, you know, exactly what you are all about, then that would be a really good idea. So you would actually just make sure it fits in that cover board. And there's all your thumbnails. So let's go in and edit this board. So um, um, I can actually add some more to it. Um, obviously my keywords here and I can change it um, to a public board when I'm finished. A recent change is that previously, if you created a secret board, as soon as you um, change it to a public board so everyone can see it, you weren't able to go back to having a, a secret. They've um, since changed that. So you can have, you can actually have a public board that maybe you want to modify or delete pins from, or you can make it secret, play around with it, and then make it public again. So that's a new thing. Okay, so I won't actually edit it for now, but let's just go... Oops, wrong one. Let's just go into this. Okay. So here's my board um, and I've only got three pins on here. And again, with this board, you can play around with it. So you can move your pins like we've gone through. Um, and editing board gives you the editing, all of this. Okay. So then what you start doing is start going through and um, creating your boards. So now what you want to do is make at least five boards make them all secret, start pinning stuff to your boards, at least 10 pins per board so that it makes people actually want to follow you. No one wants to come to a Pinterest profile when there's like three pins or the worst thing <laughs> is when people have one board and they have 5,000 pins on it. You know, it's so not organised. So um, that's what you want to do to set yourself up. So at least five boards, so at least you can have a four across and scroll down and about 10 pins per board. Now the other thing with Pinterest is that you want to make sure there's that whole 80-20 rule. It's a, it is a social platform as such and you want to be sharing other people's content. You don't want to be all about you, you, you and all about you doing a big sales pitch. You actually want to offer people content that is valuable and will help them and will inspire them and will motivate them. So you want to mix up your boards with content from um, other pinners and your own content as well. Does that answer your question, Rex, in a bit more detail? Does that make it a little bit easier? Dee, absolutely. Thank you. I mean, <clears throat> it's all new to me as it is possibly to other people as well. But yeah. the, way you, the way you've approached this is just so fat that I, I, can't, I can't applaud you enough. And I thank you very much and I thank Robbie for this facility. Um, the reason I asked that was that you've given a fabulous overview, but of mm. course, I'm not, I'm a bit stupid sometimes. I can't take it all in at once like other people. No, no, um, look, I, yeah, there's, there's so much more to it. So um, I'm glad you asked that question because 
um, what I just showed you then is probably going to be able to get you guys off the ground, you know, get moving with it um, and setting it up. And just make sure, obviously, your um, whatever plugin you're using on your website um, that you obviously link it to your Pinterest account because um, all of my traffic pretty much comes from Pinterest. And, um, and that's the, the beauty of Pinterest is that it encourages traffic back to your website, like in so many different ways, and it's mm. free traffic free traffic. So um, it's just such a, it's just a crucial um, mix to um, your marketing. Yeah. So there are no charges at all? No? No, it's free. So um, they have, it's, all, it's free. Um, now they have promoted pins. Um, there are a lot of things that they're bringing out in America first and then they'll bring it obviously to other countries. Um, but they have recently brought out promoted pins where people can actually pay to have their pins um, higher up, you know, in the home feed for people that are searching. So that's where they're going to start bringing in their revenue. Um, so their ads, like Facebook. So I haven't obviously spent a lot of time researching viable pins, viable pins where they have the buy it button, where you can actually buy directly from a pin um, because it's only in America at this stage. And I, um, other things I've been focusing on learning with Pinterest, so but that will come. So I guess what I what I like is um, their vision and the direction that Pinterest is going, and I just relate to that platform, and I think it's such a easy platform to use once you get your head around it. But I also think that it's one of those like I, I really get what the CEO was saying about they just want it to be an indispensable tool for everyone to use it every day because. I find that I'm using it more and more. My husband is a um, high school science teacher and I set up a Pinterest account for him where he's actually um, set up some education boards and there was so much information on there for teachers as well. So, um, but I did actually look up, I mean, I make pretty awesome pancakes, but I did look up some pancake recipes um, the other week and it was so cool, just that Halloween um, board that I put up. So. Um, what they're actually saying is that, you know, move over Google, if that's even possible, um, people are actually turning to Pinterest to actually search. And that's what it is, it's a search tool as opposed to a social media platform. So people, you can comment on pins, absolutely, but I've never once seen anyone give anyone a hard time um, commenting. Um, I guess the other thing is because there's not so much commenting and interaction as far as um, all the waffle that goes on other um, social media, you, you don't get distracted. You go into Pinterest, do we have to do, and you get out. You don't get caught up. Well, I get caught up because I like looking at lots of pins. But, um, yeah, so that's the other positive to it. I, I just find it, a, as I keep saying, a really inspiring place to go. And I certainly prefer to look at images to decide whether I want to go ahead and read, click through the link and get further information from the website that it came from. Hey, yeah. Dee. Hello. Yes. It's Neen. Hi. Hi, how are you going? <laughs> yeah, good, good. Well done, gorgeous. Good job. No, thank you. <laughs> I have a question. You know how you copied um, just the inspirational quote and it belonged to whoever? Yeah. And you just popped it in there and you said you can change all the description and everything. So mm -hmm. what are the rules in that around? Like what if somebody like myself did that and then put, you know, my website well, you, you got, or something like that? You still got to recognize no, it's not, it's, it is? You can certainly do that, but you don't, um, it's just not good form. So when you want to change, you're just really commenting on it. So you might change the description. Yeah. Like for example, if I had an image that was to a blog post that I read and was fantastic, I might just write, check out this blog post. It had, you know, fantastic tips about yada, yada, yada. Um, because sometimes what happens is people will pin an image from a website onto Pinterest and what comes up is the alt description. It might actually come up as JPEG 345, whatever it is, which means nothing. So another more advanced thing is when you're actually putting your pins onto your blog, you actually have to put a, you should put a description in your alt tag yeah. in your page so that you use keywords as well in the description. So if somebody just randomly comes onto your website, pins your image, because some of they don't tend to change, they might just pin the image because they like it. Um, you want your grab your description from your um, blog, and so that that gets pinned on to Pinterest. So yeah, so when you want to change the description, um, yes, yeah, certainly it's not it's bad form to then try and send it back to your website, even though you 
you can do that, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Thank you. No worries, honey. Okay, um, any other questions? Okay, going on 10.30, I've kept you long enough. <laughs> no worries. It's been awesome. Dee, Thanks. I just want to say that was more than awesome. It, I mean, I've used Pinterest like a little bit, but that was mind-blowingly good. So thank oh, you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Appreciate yeah, that. So many, so many tips and things that you go into Pinterest and that I've never even noticed before. So I'm excited to have a play tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. I've just realised there's 17 comments in the bottom. I probably should click on there and never read. <laughs> when you guys go, hopefully you can see them all. Thanks so much for the support. So um, I will give a big shout out now um, because um, the reason why I'm, well, look, I've been, uh, as you know, as you can tell, I love Pinterest, but um, I was talking to Marie last week and um, just sort of where I was going in my business and you know what I've been up to and she pretty much was very stern with me and told me that I needed to do this webinar next week. So I pretty much have had to throw this together around work and family and my son tearing his ligaments and just been one thing after another. But if I was to procrastinate and leave it for another two weeks, it just wouldn't, I don't know, it just wouldn't be the same. So I have to thank Marie for really um, encouraging me, actually just telling me to do it really and telling me that I need to do it the following week. So I do think that I work a lot better under pressure and I have a deadline and probably this, you guys can relate to it. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm glad to have done this first one and hopefully maybe there'll be some more. No worries. I'm sure we can get you back on again. Yeah, and I haven't finished and I'm going to have to stop talking. And I have to thank yet again, and I already thank Robbie, but I have to thank Robbie so much for making this such an easy process. Um, we got on probably, I think it was about quarter past eight, just testing. I had issues with my camera and issues with the sound, and we got it all sorted. So Robbie's time and dedication to this group is just absolutely fantastic. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. No worries. Um, and next week we'll be coming to you from Melbourne. Yeah, shame. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> and I don't know, we might have some special guests. I'll work on it. Yeah, okay, cool. No worries. We'll catch awesome. you next week.